to this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. I'm going to be uh, changing it up a little bit today, changing it up, have uh, a blast from the past for you, a blast from the past. That means uh, something that uh, happened kind of, uh, I say, a long time ago or quite a while ago or quite a while back, and you might find it interesting and um, before I tell you what that is, uh, you know, there's three things you can do for me to help the channel out. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from these videos too. Hey, just like you. Well, in a former life, um, I was chief of staff for the solid waste management department at the city of Houston. And I uh, did that job for like six, seven years. And part of my uh, assignment as, at times was to uh, go on and be interviewed. I was interviewed by radio stations, TV stations, uh, that type of thing. But uh, internally in our department, we put together a uh, program that would air on like public uh, television called Wasting No Time. And it was hosted by a, an employee of the department named Sharon Moses. And for one uh, episode of this uh, show, I was interviewed to talk about uh, the problem that we were having in the city with uh, we call it illegally dumped tires or scrap tires. Scrap tires are like uh, just used tires. And the problem we would have, people would uh, go out, say, in the evening at night while it's dark and they would just dump these tires. Dump means like to just throw away or dispose of. They would illegally dump these tires in ditches all over the city, in vacant lots, and so that they didn't have to pay to get rid of the tires. And then it felt our department was responsible, you know, for picking up the trash and debris around the city. So our department ended up having to pick up and collect all of these tires that people would illegally dump all over the city. And this was a problem for us because uh, it cost us and the department about $1 million a year to go around and collect all these illegally dumped tires and to dispose of them uh, legally. And, you know, as a city of Houston, we were only supposed to be collecting uh, material, debris, or trash from uh, single family homes, from residences or res residential units. And, uh, you know, if you have a used tire, you go, you take your vehicle, your car, or your truck, and you go to a tire shop, we call it, or a tire store or a tire business, where you buy new tires and the tire shop then puts the new tires on your vehicle and then they take the old tire from your vehicle and it's their responsibility to dispose of or to get rid of these old tires. So it's not a uh, responsibility of the uh, person that owns a car, you or me. So the city, our department really is not supposed to uh, deal with or to handle scrap tires or used tires. But what happens, these tire shops or tire businesses then they hire or they contract a, another business who comes to the tire shop or the tire business and they collect the tires and then they're supposed to take the tires to a um, facility to safely uh, dispose of or to get rid of the tires. So we have Tire Generator, which is like a tire business that sells tires to the general public, to you and me. And then there's a tire transporter who collects the tires from the tire generators, and then they're supposed to haul them or take them to a location to safely dispose of the tires. But we think what we think was happening, the tire transporters, in order to save money, they would then take the tires and dump them in, say, vacant lots or all over the city. And then it became uh, 
the problem of my department, the, the solid waste management department, to then go around and collect these tires because the citizens would call our department and complain that the tires were creating an eyesore. They didn't look good in the community. If it rains or rained, the water would collect in the tire and then the tire could be used by mosquitoes to uh, breed more mosquitoes and create a health problem or health nuisance. So I went on this show called Wasting No Time uh, and was interviewed by my colleague, Sharon Moses, to explain uh, what we were trying to do to uh, solve this problem of illegally dumped tires. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna show you the interview that I did with Sharon and um, see if you can understand uh, kind of what's going on and what we were talking about. It might be at a little uh, faster uh, speed uh, that, than you're used to listening. I know Sharon spoke, uh, speaks kind of fast and I was speaking maybe a little bit faster than normal, but see how much of the uh, interview you can understand. And let me know in the comments below uh, could you understand most of it, some of it? Hey, let me know. Well, here's the interview. And we are back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Sharon Moses. You're watching Wasting No Time on HTV. Our topic today, tires and densifiers. Joining me in the studio is Gary Redor. Gary is the Chief of Staff for the Solid Waste Management Department. Gary, thanks for making, uh, taking the time to get here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I understand that you're going to talk to us today about scrap tires, is that correct? All right, that's correct. Now, this is a new program that the City of Houston has started? Right, well, we do collect tires at our neighborhood depositories, and I think Javier talked about that earlier. I'm going to talk about the ordinance and the issue that we have to deal with with scrap tires and why it's a problem and what are the problems uh, that we have to deal with related so, to that. Scrap tires are actually, they fall under our ordinance. There are issues with scrap tires that fall under our city ordinance that we have to address? Right, right now the tires are regulated through the HPD or Houston Police Department, auto dealers detail, mm -hmm. and, and they have oversight for all of the automotive industry in town mm -hmm. that they have to register with the police, mm -hmm. and that includes tire generators, but we found out there's an issue that, that tire transporters are not regulated in the city. We're trying to find out uh, who is, uh, you know, dumping all these tires around the city and once we can find that out hopefully that will abate the problem that we have to, to go out and pick up all these tires and it costs us about a million dollars a year to, wow. uh, to go out and collect the tires and dispose of them. So this is a new program. When did this program begin? We've been working on this program for probably about a year, a little over a year now. Okay. Um, what we're trying to do is modify the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 39, mm -hmm. which uh, deals with our solid waste department. We want to move the ordinance under Chapter 39 and deal with it uh, that way. So what exactly is the purpose of this new scrap tire program? Like I said, the, the issue that we're dealing with, we have to go out uh, and pick up all these tires. We thought the tire generators were the problems. We held uh, several stakeholder meetings with the tire generators in town and tire transporters, and we found out that all of the generators are regulated through HPD, that the tire transporters are not. So we think it's a lot of the cause for illegal dumping is comes from the tire transporters who pick up the tires from these tire shops. They're not regulated. If they're not uh, you know, operating on the up and up, then they don't take it to a licensed tire recycler. They'll just go around the corner during the cover of night and just dump these tires in the ditch illegally. Now, see, I'm glad you said that because I think that's a pretty interesting point. When Javier was on the show a little while ago, we were talking about residents and how they could mm -hmm. take their tires to the depository. But we're, residents really aren't the problem then. Yeah, I don't really think residents are a huge problem. Like Javier mentioned, we do offer a lot of uh, avenues for residents to mm -hmm take their tires so we think the the larger problem has to do with the either the businesses or the, the tire transporters is there a particular area of focus like did you start in a certain area uh, for your tire program um, are you going all over the entire city right it's, it's a problem all throughout the city but there are certain pockets or areas uh, of the city that we we see uh, uh, higher incidents of uh, uh, tires being illegally dumped. Is it, I guess, it is, a, is it okay to ask what areas are more prone <laughs> to the illegal tire dumping issue? 
Um, well, there's a, it's interesting because the planning department generated a map showing them where the tire um, piles are, and they do follow along certain socioeconomic mm -hmm. levels or lines, and also where you have a higher incidence of, of tire shops okay. and those types of businesses. So how are you implementing the program? Are the city workers working on this tire, new scrap tire program, or did you bring in some new people to get this no, done? No, mainly we're handling it in-house with certain staff analysts. We've been we formed a task force actually with HPD, mm -hmm. Auto Dealers Detail, the Health Department, and our department. And with the uh, tire vendors in the community, we like I said we held three stakeholder meetings, and we found out that the tire generators feel that they're already regulated enough through mm -hmm. HPD and paying fees. And since the tire transporters aren't uh, regulated, we're going to target them. So the ordinance. We're going to, one, make sure that all the generators actually register with us so we just know who they are and how many. Then we're actually going to permit the tire transporters and require that they have a special decal on their vehicles. So if the HPD uh, truck enforcement unit sees a vehicle hauling tires that doesn't have the decal, that decal they can pull them over ask them where they take in the tires. So hopefully with this enforcement we'll have a, the word will start getting around and people will think twice before they illegally dump. Well you mentioned the stakeholders earlier, are they receptive to this program? Right, yeah, the stakeholders are very receptive. Like I said, the, the tire um, shops that are operating legally, you know, they said, yeah, we need to go after those that aren't. But I think uh, we're going to go after the tire transporters. And so the next step, we have actually 35 temporary employees. We just hired. They're canvassing okay. the whole city, going and trying to identify and talk to every tire shop, transporter shop in the city, and let them know what our proposal is to modify the ordinance. And that should be wrapping up next week. Our next, uh, after that, we'll analyze the data, then go before the Housing and Sustainable Growth Committee and tell them what we've uh, proposed, what we've done so far, and what our proposal is to change the ordinance. If it's approved then, then we'll go before city council to actually in, uh, get the ordinance changed and then start the program. So the 35 employees, is this grant funded? Where is this money coming from? No, it's uh, funded through our department with some extra funding that we had available uh, this fiscal year. And this sounds like it is a new program, so what is your long-term projected goal for this? Well, like I said, long-term projected goal is one to get the ordinance changed. Hopefully, sometime this fall, then we can actually implement the actual process to getting all the the tire uh, generators registered, and then all the tire transporters permitted. Work with HPD to st to begin enforcement. So hopefully, we'll see a, uh, a drastic reduction in the amount of illegal dumping that's going on in the city. That's our main goal. That's excellent. And will the fees increase? Uh, for these tire companies when you get this implemented through the ordinance? No, I said the generators are paying uh, some pretty uh, good fees to HPD. We're just going to require a $25 registration fee one time. The transporters will have to register uh, $25, but they also will have a permit fee for them. We're not exactly sure what that's going to be. It may range from like 300 to 800 depending on the number of transporters we finally identify around the city. Great. So what's the next step? I understand this is you've got the temporary employees and you've mm -hmm. sent them out on the field. So now what is the next step, Gary? Well, yeah, every uh, employee that went out surveyed, filled out a survey form mm -hmm. for each business. We're actually right now entering all that information into a database. Mm -hmm. And once we compile the database, we'll go through the data, you know, analyze it, prepare some reports. And like I said, we'll make a presentation before the Housing and Sustainable Growth Committee and see what the uh, favoritism is with the committee to go ahead and accept uh, our plan and then get approval to go ahead and present before city council. Wow, that is excellent information. I'm so excited about us doing something around the city to help clean up these illegally dumped tires. Mm -hmm. And the scrap tire program sounds like a good start. Thank you for coming on the show, Gear. Okay, you're welcome. We'll be right back. Hey, well, what did you think about that video? I know I looked a lot differently, or I looked a lot different back then. I was a lot heavier uh, before I came down with this health uh, problem that I have right now. So you can see the difference. And I was uh, quite a bit younger then, too. So, um, you know, life happens, things change, people change. But what did you think about the interview? Were you able to understand kind of the problem and what was going on and what Sharon and I talked about? Hey, let me know in the video below. And um, I thought this would just be something a little bit different for you and to practice your listening comprehension. 
So I uh, hope you enjoyed that video and uh, on this channel of uh, Learn Everyday English. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about it. And we'll be bringing you more content like this or different content, trying to change it up a little bit and bring you uh, some things that are a little bit different than normal. So thanks for watching and uh, have a good day, rest of the weekend, week, wherever you are in this world, and we'll see you later. Hey, bye. Goodbye.